Hi everybody, welcome to a new series of tutorials on a new app from Ego called BitCutter. It's um, really exciting, it's a fantastic app. A little bit complicated to understand at first, but after the videos that I'm going to um, upload on YouTube, you will find it very easy to navigate. It's an app that allows you to experiment with sounds, which is really, really cool. And um, from my perspective, it's worth the money. So it's really, really fantastic. So um, before I start, there are a number of codes available courtesy of Ego. So if you are interested, just please um, check the video description, which tells you also how to redeem the code via an email. And please subscribe. And if you are subscribed and you are a winner, then you can claim a code. Now let's start. In this first video, I'm going to take you through the concept of how it works. I'm going to go very slowly on purpose. And um, because there is lots to learn, so you might have to go back to videos different times. So this first video, just to give you the basic, and then we go through um, step by steps in the next video on how to learn to create some fantastic um, uh, sound experimentation. And I'm going to take an approach similar to what I've done in Drumbo. Instead of going through manual feature by features, I'm going to show you example. And through the example, you learn how to um, <clears throat> really use the application. So let's start with the basic. At the core of the app, there is a matrix of 64 cells. 8 by 8, which you can see here in this main screen, 8 by 8. The sample matrix is controlled by what are called five different type of buses, which you see down here on the bottom left. You have input, triggers, controls, output, and sequence. As you can see, when I select them, you see in a highlighted selection on the circle, and you also can see the name here for input, these for trigger, the red one, the controls here, the white, the output here in green, and the sequence here at uh, this purple color in the middle. The audio signal which is recorded is taken from eight different input buses, which can play back a file or can play back for external channels. So if I go here into the input section, you see the channels here, you see the input buses here, okay? The four channels can be an external card, or it can be up to four channels of an audio unit or two channels, um, which would be used as an interrupt audio. You can play the file or, or the sample directly to the output, and I'll show you that through this uh, dial here called File Direct. The call recording is started or stopped by eight trigger buses. So if you go to the trigger, here you see the trigger buses, and you see the configuration for each of the triggers. The trigger is activated when the signal exceeds a certain threshold, which you establish the sensitivity through this slider here. And you also have available what is called the band pass filter, and you can add on, on, on which the uh, trigger will be activating. And you um, set the frequency here and the bandwidth for that band um, pass filter. And that's important to remember because those settings are critical in order to activate and deactivate the trigger and therefore to record the sample in each of the cell. The length for recording can be established by activating and deactivating the trigger or can have or it can be a fixed value in bits. Okay, and you establish that a fixed level here through this slider which says length. Okay. Remember only one cell on the same trigger bus can be recorded at the same time. If I go back to the main screen, you see um, these highlights moving on the sequencer, this is because the sequencer is running. So let's go to the sequencer itself. The sequencer controls the playback of the cells. Okay, very simple. It can be synced to the main BPM clock. For example, if you're hosting the app inside um, an AUV-free host, or you can have its own trigger assigned 
and therefore it will take uh, an imp so, uh, a, a proper input as a signal for uh, triggering itself, okay? One thing to remember is the sample is fed to eight different buses which on which the cell is located and only one cell can be played on the same output bus and we'll see through um, through some example on how that works and it's not really a limitation is really how it works now we can go to the output bus here the output bus sorry yeah output bus also process the signal and um, and the signal can be uh, processed further if you go to processing here using effects and also filters themselves. From an output perspective, you can do things like um, panning here. You can do uh, touch on your EQ and you can also send uh, uh, effects to a reverb um, module, okay, just the, uh, after the output. Each cell has a set of parameters for playing back. So if you go to control here, you can set, for example, the speed for uh, um, playing back. You have also a bit mask here, which uh, is kind of cool. It lets you implement things like glitch effects. You can set, you can set the repetition here, uh, skip as well on uh, cell playbacks and so on. The most important thing is, if you go back to the main screen, is you have also what are called bus modes. And every time you click uh, on uh, um, the the type, the five type of buses here, input, trigger, etc., you can see they have assigned a bus mode. So, for example, the inputs are assigned to bus mode 1. If you go to the output, they are assigned to bus mode 7. And that is why the outputs are on here because seven, the seven number is here. If I was to change the seven to three, the output um, are represented here or near the three. As you can see, you have an, on the radio, on the circle, the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So remember, the concept is about taking um, from four channels, input buses, processing it through triggers and the full recording samples, then playing back those samples through a sequencer, um, playing around with a lot of different effects. Of course, sending it to eight output buses, which then will be translated into uh, stereo channels, which you can see here on uh, the reverb um, menu, UFC1 and C2. Okay, I'm going to stop here because there is already a lot that I've explained. In the next video, we are going to go slowly into how to create uh, an example, and we're going to slowly learn how this works, and we're going to introduce feature by feature as we go through different videos, so you learn it nice and slowly. Uh, by the end of it, you'll have a stronger understanding of how it all works. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye.